Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's content is all about how to apply to McGill Dentistry and also medicine since it's basically the same application, the same requirements. So without further ado, let's start. So just a little disclaimer, this is my own experience. This is my own approach as to what I think is right and what is not right. So I do not represent anything related to the admission community. For those who are new here, my name is Yuya Chen. You can call me Zachary. I'm a first year dental student at McGill University. As someone who has applied to McGill Dentistry for a couple times now, I feel the need that I should share a bit of my knowledge and my experiences on how to apply to McGill Dentistry. So I'll be walking you through the pre-application cycle and also during the application cycle. So everything that you need to do in order to apply to McGill Dentistry and medicine. So first, I'll be talking about the DMD program. And then after that, I'll be talking about the dentistry P program that we offer at McGill University. Before applying, what you need in your pocket is a bachelor's degree. The bachelor's degree doesn't need to be related to science. It can be anything that you want. It can be art, it can be science, it can be biology, it can be uh, engineering. Anything that you think that you'll enjoy and that you'll excel in, that's the most important thing. The only thing that is required from your bachelor's degree are your prerequisite science classes. So the basic science classes that you have to take are two biology classes, two chemistry classes, one organic chemistry, two physics classes, for a total of seven basic science classes that you have to take during your bachelor's degree. So just a side note, you have to be a full-time student during your whole bachelor's degree in order to be eligible to apply to McGill Dentistry. So from my perspective, University of Ottawa only requires four classes per semester in order for you to be eligible as a full-time student. And all these science classes need to have labs. So biology lab, chemistry lab, physics labs. Basically, these are the two requirements that you need to be able to apply to medical dentistry or medicine. There's a new thing that is happening this year, which is the indigenous pathway. So this pathway aims to facilitate access for indigenous students to dentistry and also medicine. So what are the requirements for this specific pathway? First, you need to have your indigenous status and in your application form, you need to declare your status as an indigenous applicant. So they have to meet the same requirements as the other applicants except for the GPA, which they're required to have a minimum of 3.2 on 4 GPA. So why should someone apply to this indigenous pathway? So essentially it's to have a more fair review of your application. So your application will be reviewed by the IAAC, then they also will be the one conducting your personal interviews and also your MMI interview. This pathway is new from the 2021 to 2022 application cycle. The faculty wants to be equitable, but also inclusive for every single applicant. So please don't be shy to apply for this pathway if you are eligible for it. Now I'm gonna talk about the general requirements for every single applicant for McGill Dentistry and Medicine. McGill Medicine may have different proportions for each categories, but essentially the same requirements. So the first thing that they can look in your application is your academic profile which is essentially 70% of your whole uh, process. Out of the 70%, 60% goes to your GPA from your undergrad. So the remaining 10% goes to your academic context, So which is essentially if you've done a professional degree or if you've done a master's degree or PhD degree on top of your undergrad degree. And after that, they look at your CASPER score, which counts for 20% of your whole application. And the remaining 10% is for your CV. So for your GPA, they're gonna be asking you to fill out the workbook on their website. Just a little tip, please start that early because it takes a long time. It can take one hour, to three hours, depending on how many courses you've taken. So just a little bit of stats from my cohort, that's at 2025. So the average GPA for in province 3.83, and for out of province, it was a 3.92. And they started to accept uh, international students since last year. So we were the first cohort with the international students. So we have two internationals and their average GPA was a 3.73. I couldn't find anything from CASA 2024, but for CASA 2025, for in provinces, the GPA was 3.78. And for out of provinces, it was a 3.90. I personally do think that the higher your GPA, the better it is for you because for McGill, it accounts for 60% of your whole application process pre-interview. If your GPA is not a 3.8 and above, that is okay because they take into account the Casper and your CV. So if you can excel well in your Casper and your CV, I don't see a problem with you not having a high GPA. And if you didn't have a good GPA for your first undergrad, another solution for that is you can do a second undergrad. So you can only apply when you have completed 60 credits of your second undergrad. So you need to have done at least 45 credits before the deadline of the application. And for the other 15 credits, it has to be done by July 31st 
of that application cycle. And also your second degree has to be completed as a full-time student. If you do choose to do a second undergrad, they'll only look at the grades from your second undergrad and none from your first undergrad. That can benefit a lot of people who did not really consider dentistry or medicine as part of their future career option. As I mentioned before, the 10% out of the 70% consists of the academic content. So if you have done a professional degree, that includes nursing, PT, OT, social worker, SLP, and even medicine. Hashtag dead for life. Aside from professional degrees, it also includes the master's degrees and the PhD degrees. Just keep in mind that as long as you have completed a master's degree or a PhD degree, that will help you in this category of the 10%. But McGill does not take into account the grades of your master's and PhD degree. So the next important thing is your CV. In your CV, you have to follow this template that they have on their website, which I'm gonna show you right now. But you wanna have two pages for your CV, so you gotta choose what you wanna put as an entry and what do you not wanna put. So you gotta choose the entries that can make you stand out more. So with your CV, you need to give McGill a list of verifiers who can attest the different entries that you have mentioned in your CV. So for your CV, I think it's important to be a well-rounded applicant so not just having your studies but also doing other stuff to help the community which includes like volunteering, working, and if you're able to help out the research community, that would also be very advantageous for you. But the thing is, you shouldn't just do all this just for your CV, because if they ask you anything related to your CV, they can feel that you're not genuine about the different things that you've done. But if you have anything that you truly believe in or that you want to advocate for, please pursue those endeavors. By doing so, it will make you stand out even more than if you were to do anything related to what a typical applicant would do. But there are different minimums that I thing are required. So for sure you need some volunteering experiences, you need some work experiences, and research probably not. It doesn't hurt to do research. And before the actual interview, you need to do an online interview which is the Casper which you may or may not have heard of. So there's gonna be 12 scenarios from which they're gonna assess your interpersonal skills, but also all the different qualities that is deemed necessary for a healthcare professional. So you have to do the Casper test before a certain deadline that McGill will give you. So the deadline will be written on the McGill website. But last but not least, you need to do the DAT, which is the Dental Aptitude Test. Basically the MCAT but for pre-dental students. The good thing about the DAT for McGill is that they only look at two things, your PAT score and your MDT. So your PAT score is your perception ability test and also the MDT is your manual dexterity test. Essentially it's a soap carving test that we all love and that we were so stressed about. If you're watching this during the COVID pandemic you may or may not need to do the DAT because of all the different restrictions during COVID the DAT may not be conducted. So it is important for you to double check the McGill website to see if the current year that you're applying for is going to require the DAT or not. So that was pretty much everything that you need to have done before your application or in during your application. And now for my CEGEP viewers, the DENP program is for you. So on your last year of your CEGEP year, you can apply to the DENP program. So McGill will look at your R score from your CEGEP. So during your CEGEP years, you need to have not extended the program. So if it's a two year program, you need to have done it in two years. If it's three year, if it's a double deck, then you finish your double deck in three years. So to give you an idea of what the typical R score should be, so for the dentists who are currently in my cohort, the class of 2025, their R score was a 36.95, which is higher than this year's and the two previous years. For dentists who are gonna be in the class of 2026, their average R score was a 34.76. At the end of the day, it's all about who else is applying and how good are their R scores. If you're in a year that the R score was lower, then you may have a chance. So please shoot your shot. Don't be afraid. So for the science pre requirements, it's everything that is related to your degree. So basically, it consists of Bio 1, Bio 2, Chemistry 1, 2, 3, so General Chemistry, Solution Chemistry, and Organic Chemistry, Math, so Cal 1, Cal 2, and Physics 1, 2, 3, so Mechanics, Electricity, and Waves. And for the CV, it's the same thing as the undergrad applicants, so you fill out the template, you also provide a list of verifiers, and don't forget to do the Casper before your deadline. So here's a checklist of everything that you have to provide to McGill. So you need to provide transcripts, you need to provide your workbook, your CV, your list of verifiers, your Casper test, and also your residency status. So if you're a Quebec resident, or, or if you're a Canadian resident, or if you're an international resident. That was pretty much it for the whole video. If you have any questions related to the application cycle or dentistry at all, please don't be shy to DM me or to leave a comment down below and I'll answer every single comment. So if you really like this kind of video, please don't forget to subscribe because I'll try to help you guys out as much as I can for the admission process. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.